Hip Hop Entrepreneurship Another culture export from the United States of America to the world. 70s New York never knew that this would be the result of the movement 40 years later. From FUBU, Fat Farm, And One, Air Jordans, Rock Aware, the list is endless. Today's Avalanche hosts a Sean Combs in the making, a southern boy making strides in the streets of the capital city. My name is Taj Motuak-Tuak. Marilao mang le mo paseng, le ko lady, le ko taima, baiti ki viru a tabo, rantao. That's my, 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 my ID name. Trading name is Taj Motuak-Tuak. I'm hailing all the way from Bandling and Razi simultaneously because I grew up in both places simultaneously. And then, yeah, man, what I do, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a hip hop artist at first, but I'm also a hip hop premier. Hip hop premier in terms of what I'm into the merchandising uh, uh, revenue stream of the hip hop industry. As you can see right now, I have a clothing shop and a clothing brand called Savage. Yeah, and I'm also a Savage with a passion. What's up, he says, a common greeting in this culture. But besides COVID cases and the stock market, I guess we can say nothing much. Defying the odds of one's past and the drive to see better days is a common mantra in hip hop culture, one that drives many to overcompensate in these. Every morning when I wake up, I don't want to starve when I go back to bed. So, like, you know, we grew up. So I don't want to go back to Tala Airbaya. So every day, the reason why I work so hard is because I want to feed myself, I want to feed my family, and I also want to make sure that um, um, the people, are, my, my, my network, the people I work with, mostly my employees and also my suppliers, there should be like that stream of income going in. That's what motivates me the most. Most importantly, Hella is pe it's all about passion, bro. I'm passionate about what I do. I don't know where I get it from, but it's all about passion for me. The origin of such a state of mind surely could not have been cultivated just yesterday. Tell us more about where all this drive is coming from. Firstly, I mean, like I said, I'm a hip hop artist, and as a musician, the revenue, music revenue streams, and merchandising is one of music revenue streams. So I felt like uh, I had an album which was titled Fresh to Twerk, and from Fresh to Twerk, I had the, the CD, I cut the CD, and then I also had like promo merchandise, which was t shirts, the cap, and other accessories. And then I realized what people they love promo merchandise. People always want to wear something, so at least whether it's a, it's a t-shirt or a cap or whatever. And then after promo, yeah, first to talk album, because we had a period. I have a period. Yeah, well, okay, the promo is gonna be for this long. I, I realized what well, you know what, but I feel like from what I just uh, the the reviews and people loving first to talk. Then I can maybe let not try to come up with a clothing brand and all that. But then also I felt like, you know what? What who am I? What do I do? How am I? The main thing, the only thing that came into my mind was I'm a savage. What is a savage? A savage is like an individual who's either too cool or too hardcore be beyond their fashion scope or their music scope. So me, hell on my personality, it's either I'm too cool or I'm too hardcore. So I was like, yeah, I'm a savage. So let me merchandise something to do with savage. I did some few press, some few t-shirts. The first batch, it was just crazy. And I never looked back because it, I just kept on like investing and investing in like the, those batches. And up until where we are right now, where I have a shop, uh, like a clothing shop in my hood and the response is crazy but whenever I'm a blind day 
and I'm really like appreciative to the response. Sean Carter once said, you learn more in failure than you do in success. On the basis of that, one might ask if Touch has succeeded in discovering his purpose and the desire to do this for life. Um, firstly, I, I grew up and, um, and this stuck into me where, you know, uh, uh, I have a clothing brand and every time whatever that I'm wearing, people want to want what I'm wearing, you know. If you want to like, and this, that motivates me most of the times because it shows me, where, oh, okay, whatever, I'm on the right path. But also, um, I've been learning a lot. Like, grew, I grew up, like, uh, 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 learning a lot, watching a lot of, uh, you know, guys like Barraso Simons, on this and Bofubu brands, you know, and I've always wanted to be like Russell Simmons because he's also he's a hip hop premier, you know. He started with Dev Jam, you know, Dev Comedy, and also having his own brand. So I feel like that's where I got most of my motivation from from Russell Simmons, and I want to be the Russell Simmons of the BW and African music industry and fashion industry. Aubrey Graham, a household name in hip-hop culture, said that one of the greatest challenges in life is being yourself in a world that's trying to make you like everyone else. Faced with different backgrounds and opportunities, there is not one challenge for all. The intensity of it varies per head. The challenges I've went through, number one, and I wouldn't want to lie, Zaga. Zaga, 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 Zaga. Bro, I used to walk all the way from phase four, bro, to main mall just to sell a t-shirt. What is what is for it? And I will spend the whole day trying to sell a t-shirt. No one wanted that t-shirt. I will walk back about six miles from main mall. Get by Lamo phase four. Get for a t-shirt daily. And you know what? I never gave up, bro. The following day I do the same thing. Then whoa, one day I become lucky. I, I sell a t-shirt. You know, that's a living it's for me, it was a learning curve, and yeah, I mean, you have to learn from, from, from like, you know, you have to learn from the bed, uh, whatever. I, I don't know how to put it, but it was hard, and that, that's what motivated me to, like, never look back, because I, I'm not a loser. I believe I can't lose. Whatever that I start, I have to finish. In a record called Sunshine, Most Deaf writes, I don't care what brand you are. I am concerned what type of man you are, what your principles and standards are, and these do not come cheap, but at the cost of hard lessons that can never be taught accurately in a classroom, except in the schooling of life. And these challenges have helped me grow in a sense of what now I know where I'm going. I have a uh, I had I always have short-term plans and long-term plans and I'm um, like you know how sanuki we brayaka you will go you will never go like the right way more business in kenoki way you know I've lost some zaga buyer and I now I know what to do or I know who to approach I know even how to sell my brand I know how to even make sure what my customers are happy. I know how to do quality merchandising. I know because of like getting banned target color, you know. So that has hel really helped me a lot in what I'm doing, learning from the bad experiences. Greatness in hip-hop culture is defined differently by its patrons. Touch shares on his own opinion regarding the matter. You can, we, we can all make, uh, you know, products. We can all print T-shirts. You know, we can all have graphic. 
designers and come with nice graphics ne? and print them on t-shirts and caps and everything but then that's been great yeah you're yeah, great in, in like printing nice coming up with good ideas but then how you execute them is that there's a difference between how you do it and how you execute them how you execute them now that that's what uh, uh, like uh, separates you from being great uh, to being outstanding how you separate how you push all the t-shirts now that's outstanding you get you can do all these print and but no one is gonna buy because you are not ha marketing yourself you're not advertising yourself you are not networking you are not a good uh, uh, customer you are not good with your customers or not get the customer why gets the customer you won't be outstanding you are just going to be great because you got nice designs but outstanding means like having the business acumen in whatever that you started that's how i can explain the difference between being great and being outstanding and i believe i'm an outstanding person i'm not great bro i'm not the best but when it comes to delivery i believe i'm number one when it comes to hustling i don't want to lie As an imported culture, making waves in this arena takes a lot more than what the local market has to offer at hand. Touch lens insight into this tricky but manageable industry. It's hard, bro, because number one, we don't have manufacturer, manufacturers. We, are, we don't really, really manufacture. No, most of our items, we import them, import, again. import them from other countries, from outside, from both China, US. South Africa is not easy. That's the most hardest part of it. Um, we don't have regulations, like regulations that that city uh, Tusang Ronabahwebi Baba into the street uh, street merchandising culture. It's just, it's just, it's about how you hustle. We just, you just gotta be a hustler. Get on the internet, outsource from outside that's how we live right now you get it's not that easy there's no money also finances as you can see now everything that you see is just like from my own pockets yeah and i yeah, mean but i believe now I'm, I'm 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 a positive person so now for me how will it have to give believe or no what i'm not i'm not the one to be complaining 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 In hip-hop culture, a term used to share knowledge and insight is schooling, derived from the nature of institutionalized education. Thabo gives schools. If you want to do merchandising like Savage, like how I'm doing, number one, number one, quality. That's what's important. Don't give people low-quality products because they're going to realize or you are giving them low-quality products and Barokanda, that's number one. Always make sure you are, uh, you are dishing out quality products. Number two, it's really important. Never, ever, ever lie to your customers. Never. Don't say you can supply if you know you. You are going to start running around. That's the main thing, most of uh, the business is about and mostly people who are into the merchandising industry. That's my main worry. People are lying to customers. People about knock about to sell about to desire about 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 supply, and that also backfires on some of us because now people have uh, a show if they want to buy savage value have a show what I have or because some other people out there baba no killer. So guys, don't lie to your customers. Never ever over promise customers. Be loyal, be friendly to your customers, listen to your customers, communicate, mostly communicate with your customers. How's that corner? Hi, Lori. No, so or send the Osa or Korea sell a rompian or was a corner Communicate with your customers, make them understand. We could be my Israel. That's the number one rule for me. Life is too short to live the same day twice. So each new day, make sure you live your life. Sweet words of Richard Colson Baker, 
or MGK. The fear of disdain of things we don't like, word to Chief Keef, will drive us on a path of fulfillment that blossoms into more than what we had hoped for at times. More than what you expected, just like this avalanche.